Ricky, this is it. This is it. This is it. Memorable moments from the six seasons and 180 episodes of I Love Lucy. The groundbreaking sitcom made its debut on October 15, 1951, 70 years ago last night, right here on CBS. It was a major hit at the time and went on to live in syndication and streaming that continues to this day. The show had a huge impact on television and also on a small town in upstate New York. Jamie Wax is here with more on that. Jamie, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Isn't it crazy? 70 years. I have two kids in their 20s, and that show still makes them laugh really hard. I think that is a testament to its legacy. We visited Lucy's hometown, Jamestown, New York, where now both the comedy legend and the art of comedy itself are being celebrated. <laughs> Lucy, considered by many to be the greatest and most influential sitcom of all time, starred Lucille Ball as Lucy Ricardo, the zany wife of Cuban band leader Ricky Ricardo, played by her then real life husband, Desi Arnaz. The pioneering series is credited with establishing the basic format for almost every television sitcom that followed, even until today. And while the world still continues to love Lucy, there's one small town that takes that love to a whole new level. Jamestown, New York, Lucille Ball's birthplace and childhood home. Jamestown, New York is a fairly small place with a population of just over 30,000. But Lucille Ball's impact and legacy has made it a major destination for people who love Lucy and love comedy. So why don't you join the thousands of happy, happy people and get a great big bottle of Maya Mita Midgeman? <laughs> From giant murals depicting iconic scenes from I Love Lucy, to a museum dedicated to all things Lucy and Desi, to the competing Lucy statues in the neighboring village of Celeron. And now that list includes a vision Lucy herself had to turn her hometown into a destination for the celebration of comedy. Germs. Where did this sudden fear of germs come from? It's ridiculous, and it goes to ridiculous lengths. In prisons, before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. The National Comedy Center, a $50 million state-of-the-art museum dedicated to all things funny, opened its doors three years ago. I mean, so much to look at. The museum celebrates every genre of comedy across all eras, stand-up, sketch, improv, television, and movies. Can you so, go ahead and choose some? Select some comedians. I'm going to pick Richard Pryor, Tina Fey. How about that? And even includes some of comedy's most infamous item. <laughs> Cases, but I'm very excited about this one. The puffy shirt from Seinfeld. Most people are. All right, well, let's go there. And now you can learn about the connection between Jack Benny and Phyllis Diller, or Jack Benny and Milton Burl. But the curators may be proudest of the museum's technologically advanced exhibits that immerse visitors in the process of comedy creation. And, and Carl Reiner. Journey Gunderson is the Comedy Center's executive director. As a curator, as an archivist, how do you take on such a serious task as trying to represent the entire spectrum of comedy in a museum, but also not make it too serious? I knew from the concept phase that even if we were successful raising all of the money and hiring the best museum and exhibit designers in the world, that if we didn't get the authenticity of the comedic voice in the comedy community right, that this would become the butt of a joke. I'm avoiding getting started because it's hard to be funny now. And I, you know, you know why, because it's, it's hard to be funny when everything's well, going so great. Comedian Lewis Black is on the museum's board of advisors. It's more than a museum, I kind of call it the Library of Congress of Comedy. It gave a historical sense 
to the craft that is comedy. It's better than going to a, you know, a weepatorium. <laughs> Gee, let's go to a tragedy <laughs> museum. That'll be really great for the kids. Let's see the most horrifying things of the 20th century. So what you've got here is a place where you have a reaction to the most horrifying 20th century. And it still deals with a lot of the same thing. It still deals with the same thing, but on a much lighter level. The center has been a hit with visitors and critics alike, recently named Best New Museum by USA Today. And while in many ways it's an homage to Lucy, Lucy wanted it to be much more and much more is what it's become. Lucy's last public appearance was at the Academy Awards, the night the stars shine, and she did. Lucille Ball died in 1989 at the age of 77, long before the project became a reality. But the hometown tributes have continued, including the annual Lucille Ball Comedy Festival, a legacy of love, and more importantly, laughter. How important was the influence of Lucille Ball to this town. It was Lucille Ball herself who said to the officials in Jamestown, don't just celebrate me. Don't just facilitate people looking at my stuff in glass cases. Make my hometown a destination of comedy as an art form. California, here I come. Ah. Drive back where I started from. And this is a cultural institution that's changing a small town along the lines of the National Baseball Museum. It's really a special place, and somehow it makes a very subjective thing very personalized. We all said, we gotta go. Yeah. We yeah. gotta go. But what's it's cool great. there is you can pick out a character or a show, right? Yes. And then it'll show you all the other people related to I mean, as you if, saw a little if, bit in the piece. If, if you went with your wife and your kids, each of you would go to a kiosk and pick your favorite people, and it would know where you are in the museum and guide you to those people, but also everyone who was part of their style and their legacy. It's an amazing attraction. I, I loved every clip you showed was my favorite. And learning that on the set of I've Loved Lucy, the couch was I know. Cobalt blue, black and black white color. TV, you wouldn't know. Her hair was red, the couch was <laughs> that blue. That we knew. The red hair we it would, knew. It would fit in right here. <laughs> it's true. <laughs>